Working at your own house, I don't know if you guys ever feel this, but I am so undecided. When I'm at a customer's house, I can make decisions like this, here's the design, here's what I want to do, and I go forward. At my own house, I second guess every decision. So I actually brought my kids out and asked for their opinion, because they're all pretty artistic. This is the style I think I'm gonna go with. I'll turn this around and show you what I've got so far. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Hey, good morning everybody, it's Brian with Team Aquascape. It is Saturday morning and I am standing out in front of my house here on my new walkway up to the front door. Woke up, tons of energy, got a good night's sleep, finished off last week with a lot of meetings and everything else and just felt like I should do something outside. And I'm gonna show you what I'm about to start on. And I'm not sure if I'm even gonna turn this into a video or not. Well, I guess we know we are because you're watching it. But, <laughs> but I have this little spot in the front of my house that I wanted to turn into a little water feature. In fact, originally I thought I was just gonna leave it as landscape, but the more and more I thought about it, it's like the perfect opportunity to do something really small, really different, really unique. Not sure exactly what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna show you the space. This is kind of the front of my house here. I used to have right here a column. Right in this area, there used to be a column with a little cap and had a light and everything. And then there was a pathway that kind of came in from the side and then just went straight up there and then there was an arched step in there. I ripped out the column. I felt like the column kind of closed that space off and made it feel a little claustrophobic. Opened this up, big enough for a chair. We often like to sit up here just so I kind of watch the kids ride their bikes up and down the sidewalks and so on and so on. Gonna do some type of plant or something there. That's really just there as spatial <laughs> recognition type area. But come up through the walkway up and through here. Originally this space here was gonna be left just for landscape. Found this awesome weeping white pine over at a one of my favorite garden centers out in Western Springs, or no, Willow Brook. It's a weep, big weeping white pine. Thought it'd be perfect, and then I was just gonna do some perennials. This is the spot I wanna do the feature. Added this planter. This will be for like seasonal displays and stuff, and then redid kind of the stoop area in here. So it all turned out great. Now I'm excited to do some type of water feature here. I had a broken vault sitting there. I have some discontinued or busted up aqua blocks that are bent or whatever, and gonna reuse those. I have some scrap liner. And and we're gonna see what I can build in this space. I'm not sure exactly what I wanna do. I do know I have this thing, and I've had it for about 15 years, this frog here. I got it from one of our sales about 10, 15 years ago, I don't know, and water is supposed to come out of that ball. I want to use it, I know it's busted, and that's why I got it, because the plumbing on the insides is all messed up. It's a little quarter inch copper tube, which is hardly enough to get any water to come out of it, but I think it'll be perfect. So I wanna use that guy. Hopefully I can fix it, figure out how to plumb it. My bigger hope is that I get this whole thing done this weekend. Shouldn't be too much, digging the hole, shaping this out. Hope to get done in the next hour or two, get the aqua blocks in and all that kind of stuff. Anyways, I'm kind of excited. Tackle this water feature all by myself, see what I can get done. Hopefully it turns out nice. First things first, tools. I'm gonna basically gonna be needing a wheelbarrow there and a shovel there. Everything else is just gonna be the product of the liner, some aqua blocks. I'm gonna need a pump, so I'm gonna have to go back to Aquascape, grab a pump, figure out what size pump I need based off of that little frog feature. And then uh, I think most important, some music. So we'll get some music going <laughs> and see if we can get uh, a little bit more motivated this crisp Saturday morning, Halloween day. Oh shoot, maybe this isn't the best project to start just before the trick-or-treaters come. We're getting there. All I can say, it was gonna be interesting is the space that I have to work with here is not gonna be conducive to these things fitting in there real easy. So I have to decide if I wanna go one, two, three long ways or one, two, this way. And I think right now I'm gonna end up going one, two, three because that white line is the foundation for my house. I think I can get three in this way. I might be able to get one long going this way and then my vault here. So four large aqua blocks, a little over 120 gallons of water, which is pretty good, especially for that little guy over there. I'll have to say there's something kind of peaceful about working by yourself and then annoying all at the same time. <laughs> 
All right, guys, moving right along. Getting a little sweaty. <laughs> Took about an hour and 10 minutes to get to the point where I'm at it right now. Let me just kind of recap what we're doing here. I was able to get four Aquabox in. One, two, three, four. Really important at this point before I get my liner in, I want to make sure that they all fit. You can see this corner is really tight. So I can either dig the whole thing back a little bit more or dig back a little bit more this way and open this up a little bit. I want that corner to fit in there effortlessly. I don't want to put that kind of pressure on the rubber liner when we get it in here. So I got to clean that up a little bit. This corner too was a little tight. So I got to clean this. Basically, I've got to shave off a little bit on this whole side. This area where I can't get anything to fit, what I plan on doing is bringing the liner up like this and then filling this space with large gravel on the inside of the liner. It'll be a whole lot easier to do that than try to backfill the liner to fit around that. The last thing I have to do is kind of level off the basin and then fit this guy in. I'm going to put that guy in right here. I'll get that excavated out. Remember that little boot slips underneath the aqua block. So I'll just shape this thing to fit in there and then pretty soon I'll be ready for my fabric liner fabric and then I can start placing my decorative features on top almost there all right got them all in everything fits vault is in still need that extension and now I'm gonna start putting these aqua blocks together we'll get these put together get the fabric liner and then we start creating something cool. So I'm obviously in a totally different outfit because it's a totally different temperature outside. I had to quit yesterday because Halloween snuck up on me. I kind of remember thinking that wasn't a good idea to start the project like that and try to get it done in two hours. I tried anyways. And so now I'm stuck out here today. It's Sunday. It's 37 degrees outside, 30 to 50 mile per hour gusts. So it's a little windy, but the sun is out. That's good. I'm still enjoying it. I'm going to go ahead and move forward. Yesterday we left off with liner going in and aqua blocks and fabrics. So today I'll get that liner in, most importantly the aqua blocks, the fabric, and then backfill everything and then start placing some stuff. So thanks for your patience. Happy Halloween to all of you. Hopefully you guys got out and got a little bit of candy. I know my kids sure did and it was still fun. Maybe one of the best Halloweens we've had in a long time despite the state of the world and everything else. Sunny, it was 60 some degrees yesterday and now today's 37, but I love my job. <laughs> Guys, so I started getting my aqua blocks in. You can see I've got fabric down on top of the liner. That really just protects the liner from some of these corners. Just added security, you know, fabric's so cheap. Cheap insurance is the way I look at it. Now I've got this space here and this space here, and clearly an aqua block isn't gonna sit there. But when I measured it out, what I realized is I could avoid some digging and excavation if I just manipulated these aqua blocks a little bit. So if I take this full aqua block, set it in here like so, I noticed that you know each one of these holes represents where a panel would go. So if I I came in here, shifted these panels around a little bit and cut right here, I could get half of an aqua block in. I can probably get the other half sitting right where my feet are. So what I'm gonna do is take this aqua block apart, move this panel to here, and then cut right along that line and slide that in there. Let's see if that baby fits in there. Yeah, I like to call it a baby. Don't know why. How about that, huh? That looks perfect. We'll get one more right in here. So I'll just take that other half, slide it in, and we should be all set. All right, guys, all set. Now I'm just about ready to backfill. And then, and then hopefully I can start the fun stuff, which is start placing my decorative features on here and figuring out how it's gonna go. But before I do that, let me show you a couple options with backfilling. You can see this little right angle, which we kind of addressed earlier. So there's two ways I could do this. I could come in here, pull this liner back and backfill soil all the way up into here, creating kind of a weird angle. There's two reasons I don't wanna do that. One, I'll never backfill it tight enough to get that liner to come all the way into here. Here. Two, the harder and harder I try, the more pressure it's gonna put on that liner on this corner and this corner. Three, it actually reduces my reservoir size. By bringing this liner from here all the way into here, it shortens the amount of water storage I get and more importantly than the water storage, the splash. So now as I back out, I'll show you that more. So what I would rather do is actually backfill this with gravel
gravel right in here. So as long as I keep my fabric up against the aqua box, not like this, but like this, and I backfill gravel in here, it'll fill this whole void. The fabric keeps the gravel from moving back into here. And then I get a bigger area to catch water and splash. On this side, I could easily do the soil. It's nice and flat. I could backfill that up in here, but look at how close my liner is to my patio height over in here. If I backfill, I'm gonna actually shorten this liner. And right now, that area right there is about an inch closer. Oh, let's change this. And so this area I'm concerned about because if I backfill this, this gets sucked down lower and I reduce my liner here. This is where my patio height is right there. So what I don't want to do is shrink this liner by backfilling. So I might fill this back in with gravel too. We'll just see as we go. I usually backfill on this side of the liner a little bit. Then I flip over to this side of the liner, backfill a little bit more, keeping those aqua blocks from shifting and sliding back and forth. Once I've done my two sides, then I'll do this side and this side. Hopefully that all makes sense. Do you guys want the good news or the bad news? Okay. <laughs> The good news is, is it's slightly warm. Sun is out and it's gotta be 40 degrees. The bad news is working at your own house. I don't know if you guys ever feel this, but I am so undecided. When I'm at a customer's house, I can make decisions like this. Here's the design, here's what I want to do. And I go forward. At my own house, I second guess every decision. So I actually brought my kids out and asked for their opinion because they're all pretty artistic. And this is the style I think I'm going to go with. I'll turn this around and show you what I've got so far. All right, so you can see aqua blocks are in. I've got everything backfilled. My liner's plenty long enough to come up near the foundation of the house, plenty enough to go up near the patio over in here. I've got these other areas that I backfilled with gravel. You can see how if this liner came into here, how limited my space would be to actually do a feature and still catch any of the splash. So this really opens up those possibilities. Did the same thing here with gravel. Got my pump vault all set, and now I'm starting with the decorative features. So I found this stump back at Aquascape. Thought it would work out pretty cool in here. It's not sitting exactly the way I want it. I might have to manipulate it a little bit, saw off some of the stuff in the back to get it flattened down and then dig in over in there to let that root kind of come out in that space. If I look at it from this angle, that frog guy will sit right there. I really love that thing sitting up in here and I've always wanted to get it to run. I like that this weeping white pine may eventually kind of come down closer to it. And then I had this leftover bowl that we damaged and messed up in the aqua garden. So I thought I could manipulate this thing in a way. I'm thinking about putting it, if it works out, right here. So I'd have the bowl, the root, everything's got to be carved into place and get it to fit just right. But maybe right there, and then I've got that four foot frog sitting over in here, an accent boulder or two on this side, and then some landscape and stuff around it. The main reason I want the bowl is not so much for an additional water feature, but what looks amazing is if I pump water up through it, of course I'll get like a little fall coming out of it. Almost insignificant, the size of the fall, but it'll still look cool. But more importantly, as I pump water up through it, if I put a light inside of it that agitated water with the light will make this creepy looking tree move all the time those the light will just kind of dance all across it i think i want the bowl just for that reason and then of course i'll plant it up and stuff seasonally will look great throughout the year so i think that's the direction i'm going to go i actually have another stump i can play with and maybe balance out a stump over in this area but we'll see as we go i think i need to go to the hardware store so let's go there see if we can grab some fittings and so the cold <laughs> it's because it, it is hey guys i'm super happy the way this thing's turning out i think it's going to be cool i've got a couple alterations i have to make the little bowl i wanted to put in looked like it stood a little bit too tall for me but i cut the one log in added another one i'm going to flip this around show you where i'm at right now show you what i'm doing with the bowl and then i think i'll share with you just like how i plumbed the bowl up because it's a little unique and the next time you see this it should be running i don't know if i'll get it running today daylight savings time and all and it's so cold but here's what i got so far so there's my frog guy isn't he awesome if i can get figure out water to come out of that thing it'll be great even if i can't it still looks cool there and then the bowl i mean you can almost see how i've like kind of cut out some of the roots and added some other stuff how that's just going to fit perfect the problem was is the bowl stood almost higher than the top of that and i didn't want that to happen so i'm gonna cut off the bottom of the bowl get that thing to fit into here i've got to add a couple rocks in here then i think i want to backfill that whole space over there get um like a big hoster or something 
to kind of grow out over that. Backfill in there, get some plants to maybe another variety of hosta or something to kind of come out from that area. I want to do some little pockets of soil in here. So we basically just take leftover fabric and create a pocket almost, fill it with soil, and then I can add some annuals next spring. I've got plenty of room for another plant over in here, bulbs and that kind of stuff. And then I should be all set to go. I think the hardest part for this for me so far was really just the excavation and getting all that in there. Once the excavation is done, your aqua blocks are in, your liners in, and all that kind of stuff, then it's just being fun and creative. Plumbing is always a tedious little thing, but necessary evil. Let's go over here to the bowl and I'll show you what I'm doing. I got this bowl and it was already beat up, but it was standing about three inches too high. So I put a level across here, measured three inches down, gives me a line, went kind of all the way around this thing. So I'm gonna cut the bottom of this off, bring my plumbing, you know, then obviously flip this bowl back over, bring my plumbing up through there, put a bib liner in, foam that thing in place, and get most of the water to come out wherever I decide to come it out. So I'll just keep cutting this thing. I've got my sawzall, you can see where I'm starting to come in here, and I'll just cut all the way around, drop that bowl in place, and then we'll see what we can do. Let me keep going. <laughs> See how it got dark? It's because I went. It's because I went inside. There we go. All right, I'll just keep going. Hopefully, I can get a whole lot more done before it gets too dark out here. I am having fun, and it's just kind of cool to do this on a weekend when it's cold and there's nothing else to do. All right, man. People, women, dogs, cats, everyone. Thanks for joining in. Next time you'll see it. Hopefully, it's running. Bye.